Call the meeting order at 7.30. 7.30 on the bus. Okay. All right. We're going to we're gonna skip ahead and go straight to the yeah. capital plan. We're going to go right to the capital plan. We've talked numerous times on that. Darius, do you have any other? The only, you know, there's only one question out there amongst the towns about how this was to be voted um, and what you're, what perhaps you're doing. And I, um, I tried to clear that up um, with whoever asked me, but there are two ways you can vote um, to keep on take capital expenses to the town. You can do it in the way we're doing, which falls under 16, section, chapter 71, 16, D, and then there's N. N is a popular vote. D goes to each town before the um, town meeting, and they so choose, but for so chooses. Goes in front of the town meeting, and gets voted by a majority vote, and all the towns have to vote it to move forward. The other way is section 16, N, and that is a ballot vote by all the members of all the towns in its majority of the ballot vote. So um, we have from the very beginning have always been talking about 16N, I mean 16D rather, which is we're gonna send it to the select boards, have them choose to put on their warrants or not to be voted on by the townspeople at town meeting. That's why we voted, um, or we motioned in June, uh, January to hold this so they could come up at town meeting. It just, there was some confusion out there about it came back to me that we had to set the polling and that kind of thing, and I had a call back and said, what are we talking about? And there's two different ways of doing that. You could see how you'd want to go to that other route if you were building a new school and there's two towns with different population size and you want the one man, one vote kind of rule in place and such a kind of event. Um, we are going with the, how we've always done capital improvements in this, in this, in this district, as far as I know, um, and done it this way. So that's any clarification there. Um, the other clarification I want to make is that Tonight, um, my notes out here so I say things correctly. Um, we are, you are motion, you are making a motion to move forward the expenditures of the capital plan and that you're going to borrow to pay for it. That's basically what, what, is what you're saying here tonight. This will actually take, and if, then if approved by the towns, if I go to the town, um, the select boards, if they put it on the warrant, it goes on the warrant and it gets approved by the towns. Um, we actually won't actually be paying, the towns won't actually be paying for this until the next fiscal year and even possibly the year after. Because the way um, when you take um, these particular types of loans, one, by the time we get this thing in process, we get it certified, I get a new, uh, Bob Lesko, as you know, has retired. Um, at the end of the summer, get a new person on board. You're looking at these projects, especially the track and that kind of stuff, not happening until the fall and spring, if not summer. And then you have 12 months after you issue the loan to pay your, make your first payment. So you're really looking at, this is not this fiscal year, that's important, if you're having conversations on the street um, about, you know, especially, um, I think, some of them just have some financial issues and such. Um, this is not for this fiscal year, it's really going to the next one. Bob, you have a question first? I just want to move it. Okay, we got some questions. Yeah, when you say this fiscal year, you're talking really about FY20, right? I'm talking about FY21, the first payment on first this. First payment, probably, 21. Okay, is that possibly yeah, FY22? Yes. When you see the, the first, you know, I mean, that's if you got a, a spring project going. Um, anything like the track, the, the larger ones, um, by the time the, the, the track people are already booked for this season. We're going to have to get them booked for next season or next fall, depending on how that, that runs out. And that's going to be coordination, especially with our current athletics needs. So, Does anybody else have any questions about it? Drop Does off. this still, like the, I'll just use the track as an example, because it appears that it could. Does the town still have the option to use their, um, their what's it called? Their CPA? Food? Yeah, development. So it's a good question. So we will be assessing the towns so right now we assess them for operating budget we then assess them for transportation and we combine the two together now we're going to assess them for debt service as a separate line but part of our budget they then can decide how they wish to pay for that line so if they want to debt exclude they can do that if they want to pay use cpa funds to knock down certain portions of certain projects that's all up to the it gets far more complicated, but that's what the select board and finance committees have to figure out on for each town how they want to approach it. 
because some of these assessments, the towns, they may not choose. Um, they may have they may have money um, within their budgets to pay for them and not choose the debt exclusion. Others won't may choose to. Depending on you know, Deerfield's going to do something very different than Conway's going to do based on the numbers. <clears throat> Okay, and then just as a general question, what would be the accessibility for townspeople to use the facilities? <coughs> well, it's not I a question. The big CPA money, I think they, we have to let them use. Right. Yeah, I, I think that right now the track is, is locked off. I think that we could um, we could design such to make it open to the public. I don't think, I think right now it's due to um, not getting moving forward with the, the it's a depression to do that. Um, I think if we put a camera out there and, and put in something so motorized vehicles cannot get in very easily, or a swivel gate or you know that kind of stuff, so it's still handicap accessible, but um, whatever, I think that will meet the uh, meet the criteria. The problem is, is when that was built 20 years ago, it's far enough from the school that you know there's not enough supervision. But now with technology, I think we can do something. But everybody gets to use the tennis courts, and CPA money is used for that. We haven't had any problems. We've had some bicycle skids, but outside of that, we haven't had any problems. Well, system. also bicycles. We don't have bicycles. Well, the idea, the, the main concern was kids on their School bikes or dirt bikes and then lean skids, and that would tear up the track. And that would the motivation the would be not to lock it off to actually make it, but yeah. the goal would be to have it. Yeah, 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 we can do that. So just, just um, I, I know from the, that the town, there's a fair amount of hand-wringing about, the, people understand why this vote is taking place today as opposed to four months ago, but I, I do believe there's a desire to see the formal report of, regarding the, this. The numbers have gone on town warrants without the formal notification that usually takes place. So, so let me tell you what happens. As soon as you make the, so I've communicated this with the, um, with the town administrators to forward to the select boards and the finance committees that we held the vote, and this is for the camera, we held the vote in January so that there would not be, as soon as you make a vote, I have to notify the select board within seven days that we have made such a vote that we plan on the expense it into, into incurred debt. And then they have 60 days to take action whether or not they want to bring it to a special town meeting. Because they say you want to take debt of a small amount, they didn't care. You know, they, you know, they could say, oh, we don't need to take action on that. But we, we did is we held our vote so that all the town meetings would be within 60 days of this. So they wouldn't have to do special town meetings. So it would be part of their normal warrant process. So And so I sent them the exact language in which you're voting on tonight and the exact numbers in which you're voting on tonight to, as a placeholder as they put their warrants together this spring in January. So I guess what I was getting to is that if the formal note that go out tomorrow or... I February, have the letters already drafted. So they, will go, they will go out tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. So Bob and, is, and email, so... Mary? So how... This is the wording of the vote. This is the only vote that can be taken. So how do you ensure that it doesn't get amended? Because that happened before. So, so, so people were... Uh, different towns maybe were taking out a piece of it, changing the language, and then it's a small void because all four towns have to vote the same. Um, right? Correct. I don't, I suppose you're in his own right. That's not how we had done it before. We went to a regular warrant. We had not voted to incur debt. And have with this with such a legal document, we kind of and I'm going off memory of being. I remember that year that that happened, but there were right. several things we were looking for capital funds on. Separate, it was different. Separate, this, which was different. This is saying we're going to incur debt, and this is this, this was prepared by legal yeah. by counsel that said this is exactly how you have to phrase it. Yeah. And if it was broken up, I would I would be calling the attorney to figure out what what the legality of that and probably have to start again. It, well. And then yeah, understand. I think, sure and I, but the select like boards. Yeah. But also have to remember if that happens, if that happens without communication with this board, I think all the trust that we tried to build this year by having select board members as a part of this process, they were on this committee that made this one representative from each town. I think we're taking a step backwards as we're trying to improve communication and such. From but I don't even need amendments from them. But what if the town meeting floor 
Well, we're hoping it doesn't go to. We're hoping well, I think it's going to. I think it's going to. I can ask. I can ask the council. It would happen. It's a little different than before, so maybe there's no way that could happen. But I don't think so. I have a feeling because we. I don't think they can change that. I think it's different than asking for a capital. We were asking for a capital. The last time I had one, right. it was a series of capital projects, and we were asking for that to be put on the warrant to be voted at free cash or, or whatnot, and then they can amend that. I think this is different. But okay. I'm, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna follow to the call. Any other questions before we have a vote on this? Bob is making motion already. Second. Sure. Trevor. Uh, Jamie, the second. All in favor? So moved. You know, I. You want to read the motion? Read, I think it should be read aloud. Okay, I'm going to read the motion. Just. Yeah. On a motion from Robert Halla and a second by Ira? On a motion from Robert Tucker the third and a second from Tamian Bosnott that one million eight hundred twenty six thousand six hundred and sixty four dollars is appropriated to pay costs of the district's capital improvements program, including one, the payment of six hundred and thirty thousand dollars to pay costs of designing and constructing a new track, including all related oversight, and two, $1,196,664 to pay costs of various other capital improvements, including HVAC upgrades, upgrades in the LMC, carpet replacement, parking lot repairs, <coughs> and repairs of related parking structures, roof repairs, and costs of oversight associated with each of the foregoing projects, and that to meet this appropriation, the district treasurer, with the approval of the chair of the committee, is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to MGL C7116 D or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the district, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with LLC 4420, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. And then the next page is... You want to do the second vote? Oh, then we got to do the second vote. I would do the second vote, the second page, just because the, the attorney brought it up as two voted things, so... so. Yeah, I have a list of two voted things. Yeah. So on the first one? So we're going to vote on the first so one. So vote that first one over again, just for, yeah. we want this to be, because this gets, this gets reviewed by the bonding council. Okay. Make sure you follow so you want to read what I just read again? No, 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 no. no. We're just going to vote that. No, we're we're going to vote that. Okay, vote it. All right. All in favor on the first one? Okay. That's 
Do they know you're a notary? I'm a notary. <laughs> we're going to go back to we're going to go back review the minutes from March 5th, please. So moved. <clears throat> Yeah, we're here. Oh, that's right. Olivia, uh, Cindy, Lynn, and Mary were right here. <laughs> Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. All in favor for people who are there. Any public comment? Reports none. Yes. Hold on. Hold on, Robert. We'll get to you, Robert. Okay. Oh, jeez. That's the most one of the most important ones. Sorry, Mark. No problem. What do you got for us? Oh, well, I have a warrant to two hundred two items at one million seven hundred sixty-three thousand eight hundred three dollars eighty-five cents. And we need two committee members. Yes. Is it 22 or 26? Here. 26 in your email. It's, well, it's funny because I read the count at the top, it's a 22. I count each voucher, it's 26. But the way Paula looks at it, she runs them together. So, okay. say 22. Do I sign it? Yes. I also have the expenditure report. Uh, I emailed you a copy yesterday. I've been doing some work with expenditures, so this is a revised one. Um, what I've been doing is kind of that deep dive into um, some of the budget lines now that <coughs> we're past the audit and we're past the budget preparation. So um, what I've been trying to do is go in and balance out lines that have, um, that were off like dollars and cents with salaries, um, anything that was an expenditure that we knew we were going to have to pay, like say the copiers, which were, we know that the contract went up, so the line was over. What I left alone was any lines that we want to take a look at, like subs being over, stipends, which may, may belong someplace else, coaches, which tend to shape themselves out depending on you know the overall line of what happens once all the coach stipends are paid, um, building repairs, because we kind of wanted, wanted to monitor that going kind of over. But other than that, I bounced out. The other ones, the budget overall, that's 65% expended and in very good shape. Um, the only items that I would note to you are there are two significant lines that are going over. One is spent transportation for $28,000, and one is tuitions to non-public schools for $74,000, $77,000, excuse me. Um, however, we've had new students enter the district, and um, we do have some choice students, so there's going to be a reimbursement for their costs that the SPED director will be filing at the end of this month. And we anticipate that the reimbursement through school choice that has been expenses is going to exceed $100,000. So the expense is going to cover these lines that are in the negative. Any questions on the budget? Oh, the other thing I want to mention also is that we can cover um, health insurance for regular employees and retirees as Bob had suggested what would be a prudent financial thing to do. As well as we have signs. Do you want to sign it? Well, you've got to have six. All right. I can make it number six. No other comments on that. I also want to point out that I handed out a document at the last uh, school committee meeting. The school committee asked for a summarization of the revolving accounts and where they stood. So um, I put together this, this chart that basically shows the starting balance for the revolving accounts at the beginning of um, FY19. The revenues to date, the expenses to date, the pending encumbrances and what the current balance is. So obviously, just for your information, this is still a little heavier towards the expenses because the encumbrances are there and not yet expended. Um, and of course, not all the revenues are received until we get through the rest of the fiscal year. <coughs> so I'll just draw your attention to school lunch, which is kind of running a little bit in the red. As you can see, revenues are $140,000. Expenses are $144,000. Um, obviously, with the encumbrances, that tilts it into a, a, a negative balance currently. Um, you know, food service tends to run right around break even, and so you know, we'll go through the next few months. Uh, we do have the option of we have in the budget a percentage of food director salary, which is currently being charged to the food service revolving. So if it came to it and we were a little bit in the negative, we could always offload that expense to the local budget to be, um, to keep school lunch revenue neutral. But that kind of gives you the status of where it is at this point in time. Did you say to Robert about your 
health insurance? Is everything part of that total cost now here? I or is actually, that on something else? Yeah, no, I just, actually I just inquired about that today, so I'll get you guys the answer because I honestly, I think the hours that most of the employees work, they probably are eligible, so I need to see who, if, if any, it might be just the food service director, so I'm just wondering, A, if she has it. And I think they have to be 20 hours. No, there's, there's about six people. Yeah, because no, I was doing this with the, uh, the with Mary regarding uh, overseas health, overseas health, overseas uh, food services, and she's doing well on her end. But once you drop off the health insurance, she's in, she's in the red again. So, um, yeah. I had a rough year last year. Yeah. Very. I feel it's very But I have a question. What page, Bob? Well, I'm looking for it. I can't find it. Oh. But the question is the building maintenance. Uh, we budgeted roughly 52,000. Uh, I think right now we're up to 80 some odd thousand. I don't know if all the bills are paid and encumbered. Okay. So you know that I didn't do it this meeting just because the base of the, the, the agenda of this meeting, but it's on the May agenda. We'll be looking to pay for the AC units that were put in here that are is currently in that line item. Yeah. I'm taking out the free cash. I'll be proposing that to the school committee. I've been a broken record on that since October, since I put it in. We had to wait for it to get certified before we can actually access it. So, so we, we will grant that account. proper notification to spend the money out of the evening. Yeah, so we're going to have to do all that. But first, you have to vote to do that, then I got to send it out. Yeah. But I just want to, because the question will come up in town meeting as to how much money you're actually spending on maintenance of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to make sure that I know you got about 20. I looked at it fast earlier than I was. Yeah, so, so currently on page nine, about halfway down the page, we have general building maintenance. Yeah. It's over budget right now by thirty-five thousand yeah. dollars. And what are we going to? What's the transfer? Maybe these are about fifteen. About 50. Yeah, these are only fifteen. Yeah. So, so we're over. That's what I'm trying to make the point. I don't know how many more Jamrock bills are out there. Or such, such as that. That's what I'm trying to fish out. Okay, and uh, you know, I, I did notice that the insurance was adjusted, which I, I glad finally got that. So we know that we have enough money to pay all the years. At this point, other than making deeper dive, I don't want to lose that. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Um, school school choice recommendations. So the handout you're getting has uh, has the pending applications right now uh, and the recommended uh, the recommendations. Um, basically, and it's my understanding that you guys vote on whether or not we'll be we'll be. Doing school choice next year, I'm assuming, uh, and and so you should take a chance, take a look at the numbers, and uh, you can decide what you like to do. So yeah, again, and again, legally, you need to each year decide if you were a, cho a school choice school. No. Choose not to be. Mm -hmm. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so I gather, looking at this, you're recommending a number greater than five in the seventh grade. The same in the eighth grade, mm -hmm. and five, but you've got seven applications in the ninth. Right. And you're saying ten in the tenth grade, ten, eleven, ten, and twelve, of which you only have two and one and zero. Uh, right. In terms of what's pending right now, that doesn't mean that more won't, won't be coming down the pike. So when you in a situation where you have more pending than you have recommended openings, do you just open it for a lottery? Or do you? I, yeah, we probably would. Yeah, we done that in the past before, Darius. We haven't had to. Yeah, be honest with you, um, it's been close. There's been one year, even one year where we had to do a lottery. But basically, okay. you go and names in, they get picked out, and you have to have witnesses and that kind of stuff. Um, again, some of these numbers are still fluctuating. As you look at your ninth grade numbers, I imagine that doesn't have tech removed yet. Does that tech, Franklin Tech Schools going out? No, once again, yeah, we, we, so we don't know. That number may come down. Franklin so Tech, again, yeah. this committee, if I remember, I mean, you always kind of give it discretion of the principal. Um, you know, high school's a lot harder to 
monitor, we know that the middle school, we want to put that number under 120. So would it be a significant problem to uh, change the number in the ninth grade to seven? No. Cause no, a big problem. No. no. Give the discretion yeah. to the yeah. No, that wouldn't be a significant problem. Business. We are not good at this stuff. We don't know what's going to Franklin Tech yet either, but right. right. So it's going to change. That number's going to change. It's going to fluctuate. We should not get involved in accepting or not accepting people. So this is just where the numbers are. That they have right. Put down there is putting our nose where it doesn't belong. And this remember this really we developed this because every year when we did the school choice thing, the question then goes, well. I mean, are you accepting? And what grades are you accepting? So now we've kind of kind of laid out the information just so you can kind of see where there is fluctuation. Um, we talk about school choice number that we have, actually how many are coming in each year. Um, we try to take as many mm -hmm. as we can that without going over class sizes. You know, so that's the um, if we lose a lot in ninth grade between tech and private schools. Um, no one leaves us to go to charter, so, so. it's just those two. <laughs> <laughs> My question is. In, in the world today, how important is it to separate females from males? How much more important should it be to be gender neutral? And, uh, and I don't know. This is just how this is. This is how no, the no, chart no, is laid out. I completely saying, understand what I'm saying. Yeah. To be proactive, yeah. if we could maybe look towards gender neutralization, that is the wrong word. Right. <laughs> you're on, you're but on you know what I mean. You got to <laughs> <You're on laughs> You know what I mean. So yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we accept school choice and give the discretion to the principal for the calendar year of 2020. Sorry. Second. For the school year. Any other questions? All in favor? Seven zero. Oh. Okay, uh, I don't have anything. How about you, Bob? Collaborative? Yes, uh, collaborative uh, met a week ago. And we had an interesting presentation uh, in the Mount Tom Academy. And they brought the students in, and I don't know, Darius probably knows much more about it than Mount Tom Academy than I do. But it, it basically takes care of the children and students who are falling through the cracks, uh, and depressed, et cetera. And it, it, it's an expensive program. The downside to pay for the regional school district. But I guess it's pretty successful. And it's my understanding that there's going to be some sort of a pilot program in Franklin County this year that's going to be running out of the pioneer. That's for younger grades, yes. That's for, Just for the younger grades. That's for, you know, that's, uh, that was my understanding when they were developing it, they were looking for uh, pre K to two, I think, for. Um, well, they're doing something you know, similar to it and uh, you know I did ask them did they have enough classroom space and what have you because they were closing right into the elder because they, they were talking about closing a light school in the Warwick school and they said it was already forecast out but it was, I was impressed with the program and uh, just wanted, and, uh, there must be a criteria to get into it and oh their placements yeah so yeah. it's placements by based on special needs of the student. We we access those programs as the it's not really a, they don't really have to be twenty. They just have to be in service. And uh, you know, because some of these kids, you know, they're really falling through they fall through lots of circumstances, but it, it it's a good program for my understanding. It's very expensive. But they have uh, they're at capacity right now. One of the things is the kids can, it's based at Hoyer Community College, and the kids can do dual enrollment when they're there. And most of their high school education is based on online courses and whatnot. But they have the ability to take other courses at uh, Hoyer Community. So I was impressed. Thanks. And the other thing is they did approve a second 2% raise for the uh, staff retroactive to the last July 1st. Well, and last month they proved a 2% effective July 1st. So, in fact, they gave more. George, you're next, sir. In the interest of time, I'm going to pass out my report and you can peruse it at your leisure. Thank you. Like, Mom? No, it's up. We've got a couple so, student trips, we've got some hires. 
you know, MCAS is happening. And we're going to do a, we're gonna, a drop off drill, a, a lockdown drill, a drop off. A drop off drill? Yeah, a, a lockdown drill, a drop off on the 24th. What's so, a drop off drill? We're going to do a lockdown drill, a, dr a drop off in the morning. Oh, wow, they're being Yeah. Oh, so okay. fun. So, yeah, that's all there. It's going to be so all the night. parents are already here. They don't have to just come in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Those are stay out. <laughs> we all wear the MCAS controversy. <laughs> I saw, no, I saw something, um, it was one of the questions, correct? I saw that uh, in the Globe. Yeah, I did see that this morning. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. we got a pursuit of Pastor GL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategies of res respective reflective bargaining frontier teacher instructional assistance. So moved. Second. Roll call. Damien. Yeah. Bob. Yes. Bob. Yes. Judy. Yeah. Cindy. Yes. Olivia. Yes. Keith. Yes. yes. We're going to go over to the gentleman right over we'll here. Back. We'll be, we'll we'll be back in like two seconds. Are we not going to be back to any business though? No. Just to adjourn. Not that we know of. We don't. There's no votes. We don't anticipate. <laughs>